Let's go ahead and go with normal chess, just to... And... Yeah. Okay. That way I can kinda sort of... I mean, randomized chess is pretty fun, but... I guess let's see what I can do with regular chess. have to move the pawns first, so... Well, unfortunately, that would be a sacrificial pawn, unless I figure out something else to do. Okay, well, I kind of figured that much, but... I guess I'm going to move the bishop here. Okay, I'm going to try something a little silly, risky here. I think I'm just gonna move that back. What will you do, I wonder? Yeah, I wonder what I'll do too. So maybe I'll have my knight here. Okay, well. Oh dear. Well. Well, looks like you're gonna die. Okay, don't want to do that. Man, I don't even know. And unfortunately... Yeah, it seems like I kind of messed myself up having this pawn here. I can't move him back. Let's see. Well, I guess I'm gonna try something like this. Oh, she didn't even... Okay, well, it looks like... These two are at a bit of a stalemate here, thanks to this pawn. Okay, I don't quite want to do... that yet. I guess I'll move this pawn up here. Okay, you moved your king back. Okay, I'm gonna move my bishop like that. Okay, well. 
I'm gonna take your knight. I'm gonna take your rook. And... Okay, I guess I'm gonna take this pawn. And she's gonna take my rook over there. Let's see. Uh-oh. Okay, actually, no, wait. No, wait. Oh, oh, I can't do that. Okay, well. Well then. Let's see. Your move, Daniel. Okay, yeah, I lost the knight that I had there. Okay, well... <laughs> she hasn't really done much with this bishop now that I look at it. Okay, well, just as I said, she hasn't done much with the bishop. She does something with the bishop. Okay, well... Ah, okay, well... I've got you now, Daniel. Yep, she does. Not much I can actually do. Okay, well... Alright, I guess correction. There was something I could do, but I mean... I'm still in pretty bad shape here. Check. Oh, man. Yep. <laughs> she has me. She can go right for the mate. <laughs> Unless I... Okay. Yep. <laughs> she still has me. Ugh. Okay, yep, she... she can still go for the mate. <laughs> oh my... <laughs> I mean... I'm having... at least I'm enjoying this a lot more than the first time I tried this, where... She was just so unforgiving and cruel and completely m mopped the floor with me, versus here... You know, she's not as aggressive. But then again, I am playing with casual rules, so... Maybe that's another reason why she's kind of going a little easier on me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my... Ugh. Yeah, okay, well... I won! Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> Sorry you didn't win this time, Daniel. I hope you'll at least keep trying, though. Let's play again soon, okay? Alright. Well, I think that might be my last one for today. You'll beat me someday. Someday. When my life has passed me by. 
lay around and wonder why you were always there for me. Okay, no, and no. A stupid sexy Monica. <laughs> oh, is she gonna jump in with something? Okay, yes she is. So Daniel, since you told me you liked board games, I was kind of... I got a bit curious and tried to learn more about them, trying to look for what kind of games I'd enjoy playing with you. I never really ha had the chance to play them before, to be honest. Well, aside for chess and a few card games... You mean like children's card games? Or, well, no, like actual, actual card games? <laughs> Anyway, as it turns out, the story behind board games and the role they played through the ages is really interesting. Oh, okay. They've been a thing since early in our history. In fact, the oldest known board game was played as far back as ancient Egypt. Oh, wow. However, board games haven't always been played purely for entertainment purposes. Hmm. Is this kind of like how Napoleon used to kind of have like those little... Well, from what I understand, it wasn't so much a game board as much as for like planning for strategies and whatever. More often than not, they were actually meant to teach or train people to help them deal with different aspects of their lives. Alright. Many of those board games were meant to teach battle strategies to nobles and army officers, for example. Aha, uh -huh, you see. Games could also have strong connections to religious and to religion and beliefs too. A lot of ancient Egyptian board games seemed to be about preparing for their journey through the world of the dead, or to prove their worth to the gods. I will take my rightful place among the gods. Okay, no. There's also games that have been made to express different views and opinions that their designers had with the society and the world. <laughs> the game that ends so many friendships. <laughs> How do those Parker brothers sleep at night? The most well-known example would be Monopoly. It was originally made to criticize capitalism and send the message that all citizens should benefit equally from wealth. Except no one can ever finish a game of Monopoly. <laughs> At least none of my friends and I, or I could. <laughs> After all, the game has you try to crush your opponents by accumulating more wealth than them as fast as possible. Oh my, Monica, you look so devilish. It's like, yeah, now she really does look like Rin Tosaka. Of course, well, Rin didn't have green eyes, she had blue. Although apparently, as the game was starting to become popular, someone else stole the concept and made themselves known as the original creator of the game. That person then sold a modified version of the original game to a board manufacturer and became a millionaire thanks to its worldwide success. In other words, the original creator of Monopoly became the victim of precisely what they originally tried to teach the dangers of. Of a Monopoly. Chase wealth and fortune by any means necessary and destroy your competition. Yep. That's pretty much what it is. That way, you literally have no competition left. And that was a pretty big thing in the Gilded Ages, when you had such monopolies. Of course, things are a bit different now, but back then, you know. Ironic, isn't it? Ironic. He could save others from death, but not himself. Anyway, I just think it's really neat that board games can be used as a way to teach others. It beats the boring traditional school classes, I'll give them that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm also and I'm also intrigued by their use of the their use as a way for people creating them to express different things about the world they live in or the lives they'd wish to experience. 
You mean like the game of life? Kind of like the various forms of art, actually. I never really thought of it that way before, but looking at it from that perspective, I think I respect the work of game designers a lot more now. I guess to be fair, I've always kind of admired like how people are able to design and make games. And then once I kind of learned more about the process of it, well, I guess I'm speaking mostly about video games, but in a sense, video games as a medium, as a mode of storytelling, and as a mode of art and expressionism, you know, it's... there's a lot that goes into it. Like, for example, like a statue that you might see in The Legend of Zelda. Well, any of the Zelda games. You might only see it for like five seconds, but someone actually sat down and they drew out that statue. And then coders and designers were able to implement it into the game. And while players might not really get to see that, if they're like, you know, going through the game so fast, but it's there. A lot of people put time and effort into designing that one statue. So, I would say that's pretty damn impressive. Nowadays, board games tend to get overshadowed by video games. Okay, yeah, you see. Though there are still many people who are really passionate about them. Yeah, board games aren't, like, totally phased out yet. Okay, yeah, I mean, I know I was talking about video games before, but... In a sense, the same kind of thing applies with board games. Like, de determining how the rules are going to play out, and even the design of it. Heck, I guess even with the various re-releases of Monopoly and all the special editions, like, there was the Nintendo one, there was the... Uh, I don't even remember. There was one that was made for the new millennium way back in the day. That was the one I had when I was growing up. And they recently put out a Sailor Moon one. So, you know... That that also has that also has to go through a lot of design phases as well. Granted, you're you're kind of still just modifying the original Monopoly to kind of form fit whatever theme you have going on, but it's still there. Like you, perhaps. I don't really know how much you're into them. Maybe you only enjoy playing them casually. I can't blame you. It's not exactly an accessible hobby. They can get really expensive to buy, plus you actually need to find people to play with you, which isn't always easy nowadays. Yeah. Like, the one reason I haven't gone after the Sailor Moon Monopoly is because... You know, it's a little bit pricey. Well, at least to my liking, and... I mean, I did get the Nintendo one, I believe, and... I've never actually opened it. I've kept it, like, as a collector's item of sorts, so... As well as a Nintendo-themed chessboard. I also have a Star Wars one. That was one that I played a lot more with. That one I opened, and I play with that. But only if I have somebody to play against. Because, yeah, it, unless it's going to be, like, Gary's Game, that that Pixar short film with the old man playing chess by himself in the park, then, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would need to have somebody else there. Unless I want to have some kind of crazy, hilarious adventure, like Gary did in Gary's Game, or Jerry's Game. I hope you can at least get to play with your friends, though, Daniel. A lot of my friends actually still play, like, a lot of role-playing and board games, and, and card games especially, so... Yeah, at least, like, among my circle of friends, board games and card games are still going strong, so... There is at least that. I know it can get tough to gather all your friends in the same place with everyone having their own schedules to deal with. Yeah, and some of them have, like, moved and left the 
they've left town, they live elsewhere, so, you know, it, yeah, it's not gonna be, it wouldn't be very easy trying to do that. And then especially with what's been going on in the world right now, yeah. But on the bright side, once I'm out of here, I don't think that'll be too much of a problem anymore. I love spending time by your side, and I would love to play as many board games with you as you'd like. <laughs> She's looking all dreamily off to the side there. In the meantime... In the meantime, I'll try to see if I can implement some more games in here. Alright. Feel free to ask me whenever you want to play something together, by the way. We just finished playing chess, though. Oh, stupid sexy Monica! Okay, pl thank you for not calling me Grandad. What would you like to talk about, love? Okay, well, this video is almost an hour long. I don't know, I might end up having to chop it in half. So... I am going to have to tell Monica that I'm going to have to go away for a while. And unfortunately, as of this recording, at least, without going into too many details, my living situation is going to change drastically, so... So I don't even know right now. Of course, I don't want to leave her, but... I don't ever want to make her sad. So... Well... I could never get bored of you. I really don't know. I don't want to promise a couple of weeks or a month like I usually do. I, I just really don't know right now. But I'm never going to abandon you. <laughs> That's a little concerning, Daniel. Yeah, I know. But if you don't know, then you don't know. It sometimes just can't be helped. Yeah, life just happens. Life can just throw you a curveball, and you don't expect it. And I guess it's like I always say, destiny is a funny thing. But yeah, I mean, I do not want to abandon her. But at the same time, I can't really say like when I'll have everything straightened out, so... I can't exactly promise her anything. And I really don't want to promise her anything, and then have her get sad, and like, if I don't come back in a month, then how's she gonna feel? Like I said, I do not ever want to make her sad. I'll be waiting here for you patiently, darling. Try not to keep me waiting for too long, though. Don't worry. You know I wouldn't do that to you. Honestly, I'm a little afraid to ask, but... Are you going to leave straight away? Well, kind of. Like I said, I have no idea. I see. I really will miss you, Daniel. But I know you'll do wonderful things no matter where you are. Just remember that I'll be here. <clears throat> Just remember that I'll be here waiting for you. Make me proud, Daniel. I'll do my best, Monica. Alright, well... Yeah, assuming that I do chop this video in half, considering it's been going on for so long... Yeah. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with whatever else I do. Stay golden, and later, folks.